In the mid-1800s, John Dalton's theory was that atoms were very small and indivisible, but research at that time began to show that there were, in fact, subatomic particles. This device is called a cathode ray tube. It was primarily used to study radiation, but when working with the cathode ray tube, it was found that the cathode ray, this beam going from the negatively charged plate to the positively charged plate to the end of the tube, was deflected away from a negative charge, and it was realized that the cathode ray must be made up of negatively charged particles. And that's how the electron was discovered. English physicist J.J. Thompson was able to calculate the charge to mass ratio of the electron. Soon after, R.A. Millikan in the Millikan oil drop experiment calculated the charge on the electron. This fine mist of oil particles gravitates downward. Some go through a hole to this bottom chamber where there is an electric field precisely controlled by these two plates. An X-ray source turns the particles into charged particles. And by observing the way these charged particles particles interact with the electric field, the charge of the electron was determined. And with the charge to mass ratio, the mass of the electron was determined. Before this, in about 1895, Wilhelm Röntgen noticed that when he caused the cathode ray to accelerate using a magnet, a high energy radiation was produced that could penetrate the glass, cause the outer coating on the glass to fluoresce, and could darken photographic plates. Because the nature of this radiation was unknown, Röntgen named them X-rays. Antoine Becquerel was then studying the fluorescent properties of substances, he found that if some thickly wrapped protected photographic plates were exposed to a uranium compound, the plates would darken just like x-rays. What was most notable is that there was no energy input. This extremely high energy radiation was coming from a uranium compound just as is. One of Becquerel's students, Marie Curie, suggested the name radioactivity for this spontaneous emission of radiation. Since then, any element that spontaneously emits radiation like this is said to be radioactive. Studying radioactivity further, they found that some of the radiation was particles and some was waves. Some components were negatively charged, some positively charged, and some uncharged, but all was extremely high energy. In 1910, Ernest Rutherford performed an experiment where he shot alpha particles at thin pieces of metal foil with a detector surrounding most of the metal foil. It was found that most of the particles went straight through, but some were deflected at extreme angles. This was astounding because alpha particles are extremely high energy. So it was concluded that the atom must be mostly empty space with an extremely dense positively charged nucleus with positive particles they called protons. But when comparing the masses of different atoms, they couldn't explain certain ratios they were getting. In 1932, James Chadwick performed an experiment where he shot alpha particles at a thin sheet of beryllium. This resulted in neutron emission radiation which allowed for the discovery of the neutron.